Hey, today's video, we're talking about another of the most common triggers for Meniere's disease attacks. And today we're talking about wheat and gluten. So in this video, I'm gonna explain why those cause attacks, what you should do about it. So if you have Meniere's disease and you're still having attacks, right? Your Meniere's is unstable. You're still getting vertigo attacks and dizziness and nausea and tinnitus and hearing loss, perhaps even vomiting. It's terrible, I know. If you're having those, this video is gonna help you. So let's get into it. So Meniere's disease, you know, we've talked about that at length, uh, it's basically a crushing of your inner ear from the inside out. And it's usually some kind of inflammatory problem that's doing it. I mean, the vast majority of people that I see with Meniere's, almost all of them, have some sort of immune system problem, right? Now, it's not always the same immune system problem. Sometimes they have an inflammatory problem. Sometimes they have an immune deficiency. A lot of times they have an autoimmune problem they didn't know they had, but it's not an autoimmune problem that's attacking their ear. It's an autoimmune problem that's in their body, but it's the inflammatory fallout from that that's manifesting in their unstable Meniere's ear or ears. So today we're talking about wheat and gluten. Now it's important for you guys to realize in the most recent paper, uh, the authors talk about this as being a, a major problem for Meniere's and that a gluten-free diet as a first line treatment for Meniere's disease. Now ask your ENT if they know that. I will bet you nine out of 10 of them have no idea that it is gluten-free diet is considered a first line treatment for Meniere's, not beta histine. Why would it be a problem? Well, because wheat and gluten, the research has shown this, that no matter who eats it, doesn't matter who, it creates a temporary intestinal hyperpermeability, okay? It opens the intestinal, uh, the, the tight junctions in your GI tract up and it can provoke inflammation. Right? Now, you don't have to have celiac disease for wheat to be a problem. Okay? You can just have a, a non-celiac wheat sensitivity. So I've got some other videos that explain the difference between those two, but here's what I want you to know. Where does gluten come from? Well, gluten, the one we're talking about, wheat, barley, and rye. And in a lot of people, when they eat it, they have an inflammatory reaction to it, right? But again, you don't have to have celiac disease. Now, celiac disease is a certain, a little bit different animal. And unfortunately, a lot of doctors just don't seem to understand the difference between celiac disease and non-celiac wheat sensitivity, right? Basically, they think that, you know, if it's not celiac disease, then it can't be a problem. And that's just not true. I've got some other videos that can explain that for you. But the point is, is when you eat wheat, and if it's a trigger for you, you're getting an immune system response. That's the key, it's an immune system response. The inflammatory reaction to that, that is not confined to your GI tract. When you eat something and you have a problem with it, you may or may not have GI symptoms. You may get an inflammatory system response and those circulating immune system uh, cells and messengers, cytokines, that goes into the circulation in your ear and it can flare it up, right? And you can almost imagine like, like turning your ankle, right? Or you twist or sprain your ankle and you get a, a swelling. Well, in your ear, there's no place for that swelling to go. So if something goes in and causes inflammation in your ear, then the swelling is gonna increase and it's gonna go the path of least resistance when there's not much of a path except to crush either your cochlea, uh, your, to crush either your cochlea or to crush uh, your semicircular canals and your otoliths. And that's why you get the tinnitus, the hearing loss, the dizziness, and the vertigo, right? Now, how do you know if you have a problem with wheat? Well, if you eat stuff that has wheat and gluten and it seems to provoke an attack, that's a pretty good sign. But some people eat wheat and gluten so often they can't really tell if it's a trigger or not. So in those patients, uh, what I'll often do is we'll just, you know, we'll either put them on a gluten-free diet or there is some testing you can do. I think it's the best testing to do for uh, wheat and gluten sensitivity. Um, I'll put it up here as an example to show you guys. Um, but a lot of times we'll just save that money and I'll just say, look, it's a first line treatment as part of an overall treatment plan. We're going to put you on a gluten-free diet. Now, that's probably the most treatment stuff I've ever given anybody in one of these videos. And you may be tempted to say, oh, I'm just going to run a gluten-free diet. I'll try it for a few weeks. That's not going to work. <laughs> You have to do the gluten-free diet for much longer than a few weeks, and you really can't do it as the only intervention. So I know it sounds attractive because I know it, it sucks to have Meniere's and it's terrible and you're trying to find something that will help. But trust me on this, a gluten-free diet by itself may or may not work. 
Because again, that may or may not be the only thing provoking inflammation in you and messing with your immune system. There's a more detailed workup that really needs to be done, right? There's lymphocyte immunophenotyping, there's multiple tissue antibody testing. Make sure you're working <laughs> with someone that understands that, you know, Meniere's is more complicated than just, oh, gluten-free diet, right? Now, I, I know I kind of talked it up, and yes, it can be really helpful, but the truth is it's probably not going to be the magic bullet that fixes your Meniere's. may help. You know, and I, I certainly don't begrudge you for uh, trying to help yourself, but you really need to be working with someone that can understand the complexity of it, it's got a lot of experience, knows what testing to order based on your case, knows how to interpret those tests, and knows what treatment to do. And part of that treatment may be a gluten-free diet, but there's a lot of other things we need to look at too, like do you have an autoimmune problem? Uh, do you have uh, nutrient deficiencies? Uh, what's going on with your blood sugar? There's a lot of things that need to be checked. So, I hope you guys found that helpful. we still got more videos to do in this series, but today's was talking about gluten and wheat as a trigger for Meniere's disease attack. It's well known. In fact, a gluten-free diet has is, is been proposed as a first-line treatment for Meniere's, but it may not be the magic bullet for you. So uh, I hope that helps. We'll see you next time.